Hello there, this is Dr. Samurai, a professor in Japan specializing in international social pathology. The topic of my today's minute lecture is Mr. Colton Simpson. Okay, so as usual, I'm gonna go from general information to information from our personal transactions. Okay. So let's start with today's thug profile number 33. Mr. Colton Simpson was born in 1966. So he's now 54 years old. Uh, he was a member of, you know, uh, executive members of uh, Hoover Clips, I believe, because of the three strike rule he is now serving a life sentence and he published the book inside crips okay let's start with the general information in 1970 he joined the local gang in his hood he felt like every day was survival in the war in a big city, Los Angeles. His biological father was a professional baseball player for California Angels and Cincinnati Reds. And after his parents' divorce, every day was for survival. All he had to do was uh, he just uh, ran Zig zag to avoid the bullets shot by others to survive he ran and ran in the back alleys just to survive he in time found another family outside in the street corresponded with the colton for years i'm still in touch but he asked for uh, some uh, videos and photos you know, uh, by my cell phone, and uh, I'm not that good at uh, machines, so uh, that is kind of uh, blocking me from uh, contacting him more often, to be very honest. If I was better at using those gimmicks, I would be writing more often. But uh, it's not like I never cut off my relationship on my side, like I said before, okay? His uh, unhappy childhood started with uh, his parents' divorce to a new guy to mother, a boy from her old guy, husband or boyfriend, is kind of source of anger that reminds him of other guys' smell. So, boys whom, you know, uh, uh, women take with in the process of uh, you know uh, uh, making relationship with a new guy is simply an obstacle that you have to know and uh, Colton uh, who was used to be called C when he was an active gang member his case was like that too his mother wanted to find a new boyfriend or had she only had a new boyfriend but uh, when she was uh, angry there was a time that uh, she drove him and his brother older brother to the turf of rival gang members and just uh, dropped them off there and left them you know it's like uh, the same as a uh, murder you know because in the uh, rival gangs turf so we can tell he was not clearly loved enough at home and uh, he was also bullied so many times by older kids on his way to school south central was a place like that i think and uh, a person who helped him out from that kind of situation was a, a older brother of one of his uh, peers okay and uh, there there was no place no safe spot at home 
and outside is dangerous, it is school or street, the gang that the older brother of his peers introduced him to was like his first family. You understand what I'm talking about, right? This is what he said. Becoming gang was okay, but uh, you know, belonging to a certain gang clique means you cannot peacefully ride local buses because bus passes the turfs of our enemies, right? We often see our enemies on the bus. It could uh, develop into uh, something bad too. That's what he said. And I asked him, uh, what drive-by? What kind of feeling you, know, you have when you do drive-by? And he goes like, uh, you know, carefully looking back, I think I put my anger that comes from uh, my childhood life, like memories of being left in the enemy's turf, you know, beaten up by all the kids and all those anger from my childhood life when I was powerless. I put all my anger into each bullet and you know was uh, shoot up that's what uh, colton told me what kind of car did you used to uh, drive and she goes like a chevy impala and a very famous chevy impala and uh, you know uh, i drove to his uh, prison you know uh, where he has he was at in those days and uh, the night before it was very foggy I couldn't even see like six feet ahead, right? So I asked him like, uh, I know Impala is what kind of car better. Was that kind of a uh, old car, you know, uh, functional enough to, uh, you know, drive uh, far distance, you know, like uh, Route 66 and the drive that I took to go meet him took like uh, six hours or so. I was just wondering that good-looking Impala was a good enough engine to drive that long distance at the high speed. And his uh, answer was, I don't know, man. All we drove was uh, in the middle of the town where people are packed. So I've never tried long-distance drive. So... My guess was probably it's a high possibility that it breaks down when you uh, go uh, long distance driving. My question goes further and I said, uh, you told me in your letters that uh, for you to receive three strikes is impossible. Why was that? And he goes like, that's true because they say I robbed a shop and a shopping mall and stole a couple of hundred dollars necklace and ran away but that mall and where I was stopped by the police were so far away it is impossible for me to move that far distance and instance in such short time it's physically impossible and uh, also at the time i happened to be carjacked my car was stolen and i hitchhiked and there was this old couple who uh, kindly uh, picked me up and they are the witness that i was there he knew I was a college professor. He uh, even uh, sent one set of legal documentation over to Japan so that I could read the detail of what's going on. He continued that, uh, you know, at the time, because of the book becoming a bestseller and all, I had enough money and uh, I didn't need to uh, steal several hundred dollar necklace and stuff although cops are saying i did it to teach how to rob to my you know junior members and stuff i wouldn't do things like that 
That's what he said. And to be very honest, I was believing what uh, Colton was telling me. But uh, as time passed and my the number of my experiences with crimes grew and improved, I started to develop this intuition whether this person actually did it or not. That only comes based on uh, multiple experiences with the crimes. I'm also a uh, researcher to uh, make a formula to solve problems. Unfortunately, my intuition tells me he could have done that. You know, the reason is simple. As I have said before, what he told me fits two criteria that I can solidly depend on. One is that uh, talking about too much details and uh, deny the possibility technically. And two, deny the personalities and the history of police officers who is in charge of his case. But uh, that does not mean I do not like him personally. I am uh, just uh, telling you professional intuition. By the way, Mr. Colton has this friendship with uh, Mr. Ice-T, the musician. And having such a big shot as his friend is a big encouragement to him. And uh, I understand having uh, powerful friends in Japan was a big encouragement when I was doing, you know, time. I mean, uh, when I was uh, away from home for my degrees. And uh, Mr. Ice-T is now uh, making a lot of money by singing his songs and playing a roles with his image of uh, ex-gangster. But uh, in reality, he didn't jump in. He was not a gang member. He was also he he was also saying that openly. He was not a gang member, but he was just a guy who hung around with those uh, gang members, keeping his face as a bad guy in a classroom and stuff like that. He is feeling the same discomfort for not having been a real gangster. So his way of uh, justification is. You know, he was just a pimp, and uh, pimping was his business and stuff like that. And the same thing can be said about Mr. Ice Cube. Ice Cube was not a gang member either, but uh, he makes a lot of money by singing uh, songs for movies about gang lives and stuff like that. On the other hand, there's a guy like uh, Colton, and all the others who are real gang members and uh, serving long sentences in prison. And in reality, many youngsters were encouraged to be gangsters by those songs they sang. As a teacher, those people like gangster rappers and uh, actors who play gang roles who make a lot of money on that, although they are, they were not the real gangsters, I think they are obligated to do something for those who are incarcerated. Like uh, just uh, visit them and make a speech, positive speech to get out of the prison and go back to their real life as soon as possible. And also where uh, provide money to buy like a basketballs and uh, you know uh, weight lifting tools and things like that i think they owe their wealth to them who are doing time as being a real gangsters and uh, even i am doing volunteer counseling at the japanese prison although i do not owe them but i think that is the way it should be, you know, because they beautify, they praise how cool being a gangster and living the gangster lifestyle is, and 
they are leading the you know young people to the wrong direction. I don't think that is right. I think those successful people on gangster business owe them a lot and should pay back a part of what they earned thanks to them. You know, like I'm saying, I'm doing this research to uh, come up with the how to make the society and world as peaceful as possible without deserting, cutting off people who still have good heart inside, you know. I believe the most peaceful society is the one who try to include the most with the good heart, accepting and approving their good heart, accept the maximum into the society and provide them a chance to work for the society. That will make the most peaceful society in the world. That's my idea and I think that is the truth. I am not promoting to be a gangsters or mafias and things like that, although I have been dealing with those people to understand what it is. But human beings are animals who make mistakes for sure. And there has to be official way for those who made a mistake to get back on track to be a positive member of the society. I can tell you this much as an expert. And, and those uh, rap musicians, gangster rappers and, you know, gangster actors, they are making a crazy amount of money by saying, I used to be a gangster, but that ain't gonna happen to 99% of the people. At the age of 15, 16, 17, 80, they are still in prison, and many die in prison mingled with young people who are still aggressive. Those rappers and actors, you know, uh, they make the lifestyle of smile now and cry later too beautiful, you know. They put it too positive, but that's a lie. They might uh, get 15-minute uh, fame by drive-by shooting and uh, at, uh, you know, uh, court hearings and stuff, but it is after that that matters. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Many of my friends got a 100 years, 200 years, and 300 years sentence. No way for them to get out into the real society, even if they get the 60s and 70s. This applies to uh, Mr. Colton too. He is a gangster superstar. He is tough and tons of muscles and he is uh, twice as high as me and stuff, you know. But when he goes to uh, weight lifting, he has to face this uh, nobody, would-be gangster, who is aware of you know, Mr. Colton and show off lifting up, you know, a heavier weight in the presence of Mr. Colton and things like that. Colton is, you know, smart, so he, you know, would not go for proving himself and stuff. And he doesn't need to prove himself anymore. But those young nobody, they want to prove how tough they are. But Colton has been there and done that, you know. But for those youngsters, if they fight Colton and one in a million possibility they happen to win and stuff, they can be famous. And that's what they are looking for. With too much energy for no use, you know. And Mr. Colton has to wake up to the, to, to the, to the wall of the facility day in and day out in an environment in which just a little bit of mistake could lead to a life or death fight every day you know the truth is gangster life is not attractive nor you know uh, fashionable what is waiting for them is long long years of days in which nothing happens. Somebody has to tell 
this truth that there's long days, long years of nothing after they commit meaningless crimes. You know, that's what I felt from uh, talking to a person like Mr. Colton, you know. So, uh, this is it, you know. I uh, please do not get offended by what I said in the end, but I believe in that, you know. To me, the most important thing is truth. And uh, I have seen too many truths which are not out there to be seen. And somebody has to do that. And I just wanted to uh, tell my viewers who I believe are like my students, you know. I would like you to at least understand what the truth is. And thank you for watching. And until next time, please have a wonderful time. Okay, bye-bye now.